you sound will go. Um, thank you for staying and uh, please join me. Maybe we cracked it. Are we good to go? Cool. Please join me in welcoming Giovanni Maderna, director of uh, Ciro Senza Terra, and Eugenio Maderna, the protagonist. <laughs> so, from me, just a very short... Uh, a bit. So just very quick uh, housekeeping from me, I will uh, um, ask a few questions myself. Then of course, uh, as we uh, shared with you uh, earlier on, we're going to open up to the audience. There is a mic at the back of the theater that will go around because uh, we are recording this conversation. It would be a nice memory in 10 years, 11 years time. <laughs> And um, and we will also, after I will ask the first couple of questions to Giovanni and Eugenio, we will also call uh, the co-director of this film that you also uh, heard during the film, Sara Pozzoli. Uh, Sara unfortunately could not be here because today she's also uh, presenting her new work uh, um, uh, in Italy, uh, physically. So, uh, um, but we will call her and we will ask her how was working with uh, with Giovanni with Eugenio? Giovanni, I would like to start with you. First of all, thank you so much for sharing this film that, uh, <coughs> in appearance, might you know uh, come across as a very uh, simple uh, journey, you know, of a father and a son climbing up a mountain and, and sharing stories. But uh, behind that, like you know, very direct, uh, simple uh, portrait. When I watch this film. Uh, before all this pandemic started and stuff, uh, it came to me as a very complex uh, world that you two built with Sara of reality, of uh, fairy tales, of imagination, and, 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 and much more. Uh, I was wondering if you could share with us um, where did you start? Was your desire of uh, somehow assessing through the medium that you know, which is filmmaking, your relationship with Eugenio back then, or there was a sense of desire of documenting something also for, for the future as, as a way of like, you know, serve it as a legacy for, for yourself as a human being and uh, as a father. Well, um, no, I <coughs> To, to go back in time and uh, I was trying to uh, come in here and I, I mean I remember what this, this kind of this, this film is of course unique for me uh, in the sense that it's like very very private I found it even I mean I was a bit um, yeah I find watching re-watching it uh, after s in a new edit which I already seen of course uh, but uh, is like exposing a lot of things that used to be banal or uh, private things that happen to everybody and uh, so what's the point uh, and also exactly you expose your I mean Eugenio is very witty uh, <laughs> I am less I find myself much less and <laughs> Um, and then there is these little things going on I think some some of the amazing little things of the edit are thanks to Paola is uh, are, are really details. Anyway, my the question, my my my, <coughs> I was living in the mountain in this area since uh, a few years. Uh, I lived like seven years in that in a small village. I'm from Milan, but I, li I was li living there. I've been living there for seven years, and uh, was. Uh, moment in my life I was a bit isolated uh, also loving a lot living there but in terms of filmmaking uh, 
I was um, I was not doing a film since a few years, and I was not sure what to do. And um, I remember that for me, the feeling and the intensity in my life was coming from the natural surrounding me and the relation with Israel. Uh, these these bring full and beautiful re-experience re of childhood that probably as a parent uh, you, you have when you... you um, um, so I, I, I wanted uh, to do something. Uh, I remember my, my motto was uh, don't know what you are doing, just start doing something even before filming. I remember we have been talking, me and Eugenio. That's why, of course, there was no script, but we, we, we made a map with uh, the locations in the, in the woods, and uh, we decided uh, we will stop here, we will stop there, and we will talk here, there, maybe about this or that, but were things that we discussed many times in the year before. I don't know if you, if you remember, I hope not. But <laughs> we 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 have be, we had been like preparing uh, consciously or or not. Uh, we were been preparing. Uh, I mean, Eugenio for sure knew what was uh, important for me in that moment in life, <laughs> and so so brilliantly uh, re watching the film, he, he he came up with the right question for the right uh, answer for sometimes <laughs> at the right moment. Um, for me, it was like uh, a, 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 a take stock of the situation without making a real plan. So, again, don't d d d get a bit lost. Don't think to know what you are doing, uh, but keep concentrated. That was my, my, my plan. So exactly what all the film commissioners love a lot to hear. <laughs> And so we started. I remember we didn't get the funding even from Milan, people I know very well, because they said, well, I'm not giving money to Giovanni to film his holidays with his son. So uh, uh, it was really like uh, nothing, almost nothing. Then the real, and I was very interested in nothing, uh, almost nothing. Uh, what, what survives? If you, if, you, if you expose yourself, what can survive? Uh, what can be interesting to someone else uh, or even to ourselves? Uh, and anyway, then I should say the first version was uh, different. There was a lot of progressive music from the 70s, Italian progressive music. For, for me, this was a progressive film and a little bit of a Western when I started. <laughs> Uh, so what it's difficult to, to say then, yeah. No, I mean... It's another version. Yeah, exactly. We, uh, we, we will ask a bit from that. Um, but I would like to, before trying to call uh, Sarah, I would like, to, you know, to ask you, uh, before, you know, dwelling on, 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 on those years, uh, how do you feel today when you do films right now? Like when you um, it was actually the first time I watched it since the film in, in yeah. Venice. And it was quite uh, quite intense because obviously it's very it's very private, intimate, mm. and and in my mind it kind of mixes with the memories I have of that period, like of the time I used to spend with my dad. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit processing still. <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 if you can basically like tell us uh, without hurting the audience mind uh, the 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 feeling that you had when. I don't remember, no, okay. but um, so something that actually always comes up to, to, to the mind. Ah, okay. Even right? If you were, yeah, like, so, um, so I guess it came quite natural. Yeah, it's an ongoing process that you yeah. were experiencing as yeah. you were growing up. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's, I guess I'm also aware that Sarah is actually leaving the, her flat to go to the premiere of her new work, so let's call it with her to Elaine. Uh, 
Charles and Angelo, hi, we are here on, on stage. Uh, thanks for, for being with us. Um, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for calling, calling me. Uh, yes, we can, uh, hopefully. Um, so, uh, uh, Sarah, I was wondering if you could uh, tell us how you, you meet Giovanni and, uh, and, uh, and how you two actually talk about this uh, collaboration uh, and, and, and these projects. Allora, eh, ah, eh, parlo in italiano, va bene? Sure, no problem, then I will translate. I think it's yeah. better. Cool. Allora, ehm, ehm, allora, Giovanni l'ho incontrato la prima volta, credo, al centro sperimentale, perché entrambi lo frequentavamo, e poi ci siamo persi di vista per anni, e un amico comune, un critico, ci ha messo in contatto. Non so se vuoi tradurre. Sure. Uh, uh, Sarah Giovanni was basically uh, um, uh, at the same film school uh, in Italy, uh, but then uh, they, they somehow, after the school, lost uh, contacts, uh, and uh, a mutual friend, a film critic, was able to reconnect the two of them. Sofia, beh, continua, poi dopo faccio una traduzione più... Più lunga, ok, sì. più uh, concisa. E, e così è nato il progetto di realizzare eh, questo film eh, che inizialmente, che Giovanni aveva, inizialmente aveva anche, di cui aveva scritto un'idea, un mm. ma poi abbiamo visto che eh, la cosa migliore era quella di partire e di vedere che cosa la vita ci, ci offriva e quindi è stato un viaggio, un'esperienza di vita e un film allo stesso tempo. So basically this, this project was conceived by uh, Giovanni and, and Sara very organically uh, through the conversations that they had, the exchange and, and, and the films that they made up to that point. Uh, and that organically uh, they decided to, uh, to embark on this journey and leave many doors open to see what that journey could actually um, uh, lead to uh, a, a, a this film in particular. A and Sarah, on a daily basis, how was like, you know, the, the, the collaboration with you, you and Giovanni? Then you know, we will continue with, with Giovanni uh, also on, on these notes. But yeah, it would be nice to understand much better the, the collaboration on a practical basis. It's how much improvisation you were leaving to Giovanni Eugenio or vice versa and how was uh, unfolding? So basically, Sarah is, is, is telling us that uh, the, the, the plan was uh, literally like, you know, to, to, to be led by life, by the, the experiences that the, the three of them were living on this mountain. And, uh, and mainly, uh, then in the end, they discovered that uh, uh, they were led by the intuitions and, and by the brightness and, and the beautiful attitude that uh, Eugenio was uh, presenting them with. And that became uh, a way of working uh, for them, for Giovanni and for Sara together uh, uh, to basically create this, this project. 
Okay, Sarah, thank you so much. We know that you, you are actually about to leave the, the your apartment to, to go to the premiere. Uh, good luck with the, the premiere of your new film, and hopefully we can show it at the ICA soon. Oh, thank you very much, chef, and uh, my best regard and love from Italy. Ciao. Um, Giovanni, on, on these notes, on the notes of improvisation, on, on, on the notes of like, you know, uh, building, uh, the film um, also very uh, physically uh, enters dimensions of like, you know, the presence of the camera and also leaves these more like, you know, material physical dimensions to leave space to stories, tales and, and, and fabulation. I was wondering if this also for you was something that you know that you were thinking about because y your formation is also rooted. We will talk more in depth about this, but your formation as filmmaker is also rooted in uh, fictional cinema. No, you come to this project uh, as a fictional filmmaker mainly. Uh, but yeah, I was wondering uh, in relation to improvisation, and uh, this would be also a question for Eugenio and his role in, in all this. Uh, yeah. Well, as, as Sarah said, I think uh, everything was, for me, <coughs> everything was uh, uh, changed by uh, the decision to follow uh, Eugenio and uh, what happened on a daily basis, and also by the attitude of Sarah. So the involvement of Sarah, for me, changed uh, what I would have done. I. I think uh, that my original idea was to was was to have more control, uh, and um, I wrote something, and I had. Uh, but as, as I said, uh, at some point, I, I really decided to to leave uh, all that behind, which few people also uh, reproached me about because uh, they were. Um, I mean, it was more of a script, <laughs> but I I think um, for me there was a desire also, I don't know, after a few fiction films, uh, quite different, uh, some more in the industry, some very independent, but there is kind of feeling that you, I had the impression that I, the product, uh, what come out is, is uh, in a way, <laughs> so much yourself uh, you, you repeat things so you are you have a limited horizon of what you can do and where you go sometimes also unintentionally so i wanted a bit to get rid of myself <laughs> that was the clear for me uh, i wanted to to try to to risk and to 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 also to to trust and to follow other people so eugenio for sure but also sarah whose attitude was very different. The, the, the open one of the opening scenes, uh, the, fir the first part with the candles and Eugenio, for me, was not, I mean, Sarah took the camera and started filming without me. I was not even in the mood. Um, uh, so, <laughs> so it's really something, and then I think it's probably one of the best scenes, uh, the, the moment that creates a lot of the dynamics and of, uh, and uh, of the kind of narrative, I think. So yeah, that's my. I, I it was was very important for me in this film to go out of my comfort zone uh, and uh, do the opposite of cultivate my uh, idiosyncratic taste or pattern of decision aesthetically or nar in a narrative and. Uh, yeah, it was, was do things that other people uh, decided or follow other people. And you know, for you, again, in, in this sense, improvisation, you feel that, like, you know, somehow that you were fixing within a role, or you did feel that for you was just a big adventure, a new role, like, you know, was not confined by also the desire of, you know, again, talking a bit of materiality of cinema, no? Creating something within the project. Did you really feel like, you know, this was the goal of your reaching in this way, so you could yeah. have achieved something? Yeah. I, um, I, I, yeah, I really didn't, I think I really didn't feel like, um, 
like it was a role or it was a character or, or I mean we were I didn't feel like we were making something up and yeah and I think um, s point I mean one thing about this movie was to make I don't know to tell something very honest and very intimate and without using fiction and fiction is very useful to do that because we use fiction fiction to s because it's it's difficult to be naked I don't know um, but I think this I really enjoyed watching this movie because because it managed to be to be honest and be and without using any sort of of um, over structure and in a sense into a psychological section. <laughs> it worked out quite well, but we will try again. I'm sure that uh, we can succeed. But I do have one question in addition to, 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 to Charlie Hendrix and, and this, because one thing that I loved about the film, Juan, is that uh, as much as you were uh, telling stories to your guests, those stories to me felt uh, also y a desire of you of uh, uh, using the stories like, you know, a devil wants to serve, no? But definitely you were using stories that you were uh, hoping to share with the clientele who were genuine to go back to that world. You know, uh, it, 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 for me, there was a mirror always acting between me and Eugenie, where Eugenie was serving uh, as a bridge for you to get back to childhood, uh, to that studio to the child. But Eugenie, was to you, it was again the idea of doing, like, you know, what the cinema can create, what, like, you know, documentation can do and the extreme analysis can do, because you really listen to your good song, your good music, your and it was, like, you know, also so natural in that sense. Uh, so I was wondering if you, if you had any thoughts, like, you know, either tonight with this, this film or with, with other points that have come out of point or uh, from, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, the stories uh, and or in general. I, I yeah, to, to create a bridge uh, yeah. through, yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, uh, for me, it was this ambiguous, because, I mean, you feel a bit, uh, you ask yourself uh, if you are using uh, someone else's childhood in order to, 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 to talk or to uh, reflect or to, or to re-experience your own or to re-find re your own. Uh, um, so I think there was, uh, it was complex. And uh, even re-watching the film, I think... Uh, was I mean it's very simple everything, but at the same time, what's going on is quite complex. I mean there is there is a quite clear swapping roles in the sense of who is leading. I mean in the ending is even quite ex explicit. In these things, Paola Freddi, the editor, has been very good because they tended to in this strong attempt to get lost. Uh, I got lost indeed. Uh, she put some order in the so at the end there is a, you go you go ahead. And he's leading clearly. I mean, it's explicit. And there is. A, um, then there was this. This uh, for me was uh, was a very interesting uh, day experience. And then I watched also. Uh, I mean, rewatching the footage, I I, I saw it uh, afterwards. But I, I I remember I felt that uh, going up and doing this physical effort. All the the beginning there is in me a kind of tension, rage. Or, or some kind of I, I was uh, I wanted to settle a few things in regards to my family uh, or th th was taking stock of my life at that point uh, trying to raise all possible questions and problems and doubts um, going up with the physical effort and the natural and the in the the, the the relation and the way of talking changed so the way we talk after a while is very, I see my way of talking changed a lot. And um, so that was something quite, uh, quite interesting. And this part of something that I'm still very interested in, which is uh, <coughs> cinema also 
is always a physical and uh, human, of course, experience, what you live in the making of a film. And I'm always tempted to blur the boundaries between these two, even when it's more fiction than this is. Uh, uh, but, but then everything is fiction. We make these things anyway. We try to do something. We were doing something, making up something. We were also sometimes doing the, the, the story. I don't want to spoil or to, but the story of the elephant was done at least five times because the beginning was too long. <laughs> uh, so there was that was acting uh, being directed by by Sarah. So I I but I think there is something that I love about uh, being being involved uh, even physically and uh, in the making of the film and show it on the screen because it changes the, the it's like uh, yeah it's like a physical performance and. Uh, um so to separate completely for me is always a bit unnatural and i lost lose contact with what i'm really doing when there is for me the need also of an instincting and even physical drive to go to the next step and to this is good this is not so let's go in this direction or the other direction um yeah well, I, I think this materiality uh, and, and this that makes this dualism between Film and narrative is very, uh, very beautiful and uh, very well balanced. I was wondering if uh, any of you have any questions for the gentleman on the right, uh, or the one from Argentina, or any question for them. Hi, um, I have two questions. Um, the first one is for Giovanni. So, first of all, like your parenting style, where you're allowing the child to ask questions and to be themselves. Like what inspires you to be that way? Is it something to do with how you were raised with your parents? And you said that you're trying to progress, so. Well, we can, uh, uh, Jaco, is it possible to, 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 to bring the sound of the mic at the back up because Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, thank you. Sorry. Uh, how much did you get? Like, what did you understand anything? No, what, if you can repeat, it would be good. Okay, so the first question is for Giovanni. Uh, so I see that you have this parenting style in which you are allowing your child to like ask questions and be himself, and you're not really judging him. So I, the first question is like, what inspires you or what motivates you to be that way? Is it the way you were raised by your parents and you said that you're trying to progress so is it something to do with that and uh, do you want me to ask the second question now or should it no, we, let, we let Giovanni answer this and then we come back to you thank you so much cool. if, I, if I get it right uh, your question I think uh, well the attitude of, of putting these themes and asking these questions or being uh, in a way um, uh, provocative is um, yeah at the, at the beginning was really part of the project for me uh, then as said i was uh, noticing that as the filming went on this tension and this this even uh, a bit kind of if i can say confrontational attitude uh, was uh, in a way slightly appeased um, I don't know if this is what you... So my question is mostly psychological because uh, when I see this relationship, I compare it to my relationship with my father. And if I would ask him these questions, uh, he would look at me like I stabbed him in the eye. So that's what I mean. Like you started? Okay. Uh, I, yeah, well, it was... Uh, yeah, of course. I remember in Venice there was there was there were my there was my mother at the screening, and Eugenio felt he was nine. <laughs> he felt he wanted to he, he went to her before the screening and say this film contains <laughs> things <laughs> that <laughs> that maybe you are not very happy by. It's a film, you know. <laughs> he, he did that. Of course, I didn't. And, uh, and uh, so. 
Yeah, I mean, it's we're watching now after 10 years that uh, life changes, of course, and uh, I felt a bit... Uh, then I felt also that I, I, I sound uh, sometimes a bit harsh with Eugenio and uh, uh, giving answers that are kind of assertive, but actually they can be very wrong. Um, so, but this is part, I think, uh, maybe of the mirroring of the city. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about how wrong was my father in the meanwhile being wrong with my son and, uh, and then swapping roles and uh, all this was part of the... But you know. Santi, with your uh, career attempt uh, at sharing with uh, Eugenio a critical thinking, no? Rather than just a, 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 an horizontal, a, a vertical way of like you know, making the adjudication, no? A path yeah. wrong. It's, it's the, of course it was a path to money, but you were saying to Eugenio, you have to eat. Of course, the words of a child and the words of an adult are different. It's just understood, but the result for you as a child has been open in a way that you know, you're not uh, you're an individual or an with your father or your mother. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was. Uh, I mean, of course, the way we always spoke with Eugenio, um, which of course changed in the years, w w was always very different from the way I could speak with my father. Ever so, mm, yeah. I mean, that's a generational thing. I think there was a second question for Eugenio. Um, actually, now that I think about it, I think the question is better for you, for Giovanni. So my question is like a second question is like when you're filming with with the children and you have this authority that you are their father. So when you're filming, where do you set the boundary to stop filming? Thank you. Well, th this is, uh, for me, came from the fact that we already talked a lot, me and Eugenio, I mean, about the same thing. So I was knowing that I, I, I was not saying or entering uh, a territory which was not uh, felt uh, safe uh, for Eugenio. Then I Eugenio can say uh, how was this feeling. Uh, also because I don't personally, I, I, I in, in, in this kind of uh, cinema reel or whatever you want to call it, I, I, I don't like at all the mm, excess or when you expose your life uh, um, in a in a way, I mean, for me, is is always has always to be uh, in a way um, fictionalized and uh, elaborated. I don't believe in showing something uh, uh, as it happens, but it can be something uh, cruel or, or, or excessive, or can be just uh, 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 some intimacy violated. I don't. I don't. I'm not interested in that. I don't. I don't want it. So mm, for me, that was the, the 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 border not to not to cross. I mean, uh, for me, it was always a collective of three people uh, filming, filmmaking. Was never like for me it was uh, but also in other films or in the part of this film that were. Uh, in the other version, I film other people. I, I, I don't like even to film a person who is not uh, part of the game, uh, not uh, totally uh, aware or accepting. Uh, so I, I mm, yeah, I, I my, 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 my goal was not to, to, to reveal or to show things uh, uh, without any filter. That was not the case. For me, it was an exploration of uh, possibilities of another way to enter uh, fiction, to, to express uh, another kind of uh, narrative using other instruments, which I think uh, it, it was very useful for me because the, the, the following projects were, again, working on, on, on variation of these, and then uh, even now I, I, I think in a more 
in a more narrative or, or narrative in a more explicitly fiction way, but this teaching, uh, this way of feeling free and uh, exploring um, really 360 degrees with the participation of the people involved and with the no boundary of uh, I am filming, you are the actor, uh, so we we stop here because if not uh, we cross the border of fiction or not fiction. This uh, is, is fine. I think everything is fine and it's important to break these, these, these rules if you want, but in a, in, a, in, a, in a game which is uh, agreed by all the participants and uh, where the, I think the interest, if, it, if you get to anything interesting, <laughs> can come only if there is a deep digging into the, the, the territory that you decide to sh the ground that you decide to share with the, with the other participants and then with the audience. I don't know. Can I ask Sorry. Um, the question was about uh, boundaries of parenting during the movie. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and in, in the few threads that come out, these boundaries were blurred as the film master blurred that in a, in a formal way. But the few threads that emerged from this, these boundaries were constantly somehow threatened or to accept the decision. No, I think I think it was uh, actually I think his creative process was always kind of part of our relationship. So um, when the movie was done, it was, it was these were boundaries that we, we already knew in our relationship. Um, do you agree? Um. <laughs> <laughs> so you think uh, the traditional boundaries, the creative boundaries were somehow overlapped in, in the yeah, definitely. dialogue? Um yeah. I'm trying to think back then like um um but I think it was yeah, I think uh like he was as a as a father he was as he was in the movie, so I think the boundaries were always always the same. Yeah. And I think it's sad, you know, that, that that's like you know, the reference and that's like you know level of uh, uh, reality whether or not it appears to be through the lens of, 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 of the cinema in the movie you know, it comes out not so physically in the film in some way but I cannot see uh, meaning I cannot see somehow playing on it's either there or it's not there in the film in relation to the set um, there was a question there right? yeah I was just curious because you mentioned that there were already two other versions do you intend to keep on cutting out footage and maybe in 10 years have only the opening scene and the closing one or just another version <laughs> I mean this this version was uh, asked by a producer immediately after Venice because they wanted because the, the someone also I mean the, the, the film was well received uh, for this little film that it is I mean in terms of it's not great commercial production of course but it there were people saying, "Okay, you put because in the in the Venice version there is this radio. There were things I, I I decided to open the doors, and what happened around us could enter. So we listened to a, a radio program about this music progressive uh, producer uh, who was uh, uh, producing in the 70s great music." and they were playing also the music. So I used that radio program and I put in the edit in the film in the car when it really happened, but then also in other points of the film very freely in a kind of progressive way, like progressive rock. <laughs> and the other one we came across driving from Milan to the mountain, we came across a famous strike, a protest uh, of workers in a factory in Milan, near Milan, and uh, and these people, uh, I filmed these people. I interviewed the people. I show stuff, and they they became part of the film. So I showed this footage inside. I mean, edited, alternated to the relation between me and him. Also in the part where we were, when we were isolated in the mountain, then suddenly the workers 
comes up, uh, the food that comes up, and they, they also these waltzes, they were famous because they went, the protest was to go up to on top of the crane, and they stayed there for one week, uh, fasting or eating very little. So there was a kind of parallel about this crime in the different months and for different reasons, and there was a parallel, and they loved. They say that uh, one of these protesters told me, I loved when you watched the film in that version, he said, I love that you put such a sweet thing as his childhood is uh, in parallel with such a hard thing as our factory protest uh, has been, because it was very, very hard. Very, very was there was a lot of media coverage and uh, was very, very hard. They were very criticized and then also because they rejected the help of any political parties, even of the unions, was a very radically, uh, I mean, they, they made it. In they, they, they won, they got what they wanted. Uh, but so it was, was uh, in a way, was, uh, there was a parallel. I felt that I found uh, friends on the way, or even brothers, because it was uh, that kind, also the attitude of these workers was, in a way, look, we think this, we do this. Mm, we don't listen to anybody. We don't know what we are doing. Okay, let's see, we go. And they did something which was the first time was unique in Italy in that moment already, I'd say. I mean, the, this kind of protest. Um, for, um, so, uh, uh, sorry, what? Uh, no, so for me, but anyway, there were people writing, okay, but uh, the film, we love this and that, but the, you are asking too much to the viewer because it's, for me, it was a, I was defending the film by saying it was three-dimensional. So there was three, it was not uh, two-dimensional, it was three because there were these other layers and there was traveling the space and in time. The 70s was were there and then these these mountain child father son and then the workers on the crane was it was a was more political in a way it was pro for me it was a progressive rock film <laughs> it was very long also like progressive love you think it's finished and then it starts again in a different way and then there was a voice over the like 10 minutes at the towards the ending of uh, one of the workers no it was me reading something that the workers wrote with pictures made by a uh, a woman that I met that was there also. We shared some time with the workers during the strike. We were all the rest of the world was outside the factory. And uh, so using different, changing the tone, you know, of the, uh, the, the, the language, the film language, after one hour and a half of the film becomes another film, uh, like progressive rock. So for me it was, uh, was uh, exciting. And and also for other people, I hope. But mm, anyway, I was asked immediately to make a linear version. Let's say we, everybody loves you and uh, and Eugenio, uh, probably more Eugenio. But anyway, you need uh, we need you. As <laughs> no, I'm just. It's, uh, it's so it's uh, was uh, and then when uh, and I was against because for me it was like less interesting, it was not as uh, strong and uh, provocative as I wanted it to be. My producer told me that you, you, want, you want to provoke. Mm, and then when I ask you that, you feel an idiot because I mean, <laughs> yeah, I want to provoke, but I want to say that I don't want to say that I want to provoke. <laughs> um, so anyway, that, so I say, Paola Freddi, who is the editor of all my film basically, except the one or two that I edited myself, uh, I say, okay, Paola can do it. I, I'm not, I mean, I already worked on two versions and uh, uh, so she can do it uh, and she did it. And, and then when I watched it, I thought it's, but the producer was already gone also because he asked uh, like uh, the year when the film was released and we did it like seven years later, this version. So, <laughs> but uh, he, he when I watched, I say, well, it's another version. It's it's very. These actually some things are stronger in this simplicity. I think. And then she was very brilliant. There are things that I, I you really learn now when you see. No, no, there is a moment where he is bringing up the the wood with me. For the before the fire, before the bonfire, we make, and uh, he's climbing, and I cut there, 
when he does this trick with the with the wood, with a piece of wood, he does this because he's a good cut, and then rhythmically, and then he, he, you see that he's doing an effort. But actually, she kept when I saying, "Give me her hand," and uh, wants to help him, and he refused to get the hand. And that moment is very is very important in the dynamic and psychological psychological narrative of the film, and I missed it. In the other, the other one is more rhythmical, is more rock and roll, is uh, so it makes make sense. But anyway, she was very great, I think, in building a narrative and a psychology from these uh, details. Thank you. There was a question in the chat. Uh, um, yeah, I wasn't completely clear during the film of your relationship with your wife or ex-wife or Eugenio's mother at the time. I think she's mentioned occasionally, but it wasn't completely clear what the relationship between the three of you was at the time. And I was wondering how important that was, whether it had featured in previous versions or whether you know, your mother or partner were talked about much at all during that process or did she have any role at all in having to give consent so yeah is that person you know in any version or, or in consent relevant at all at any point during the discussions you had at the time dur during the making of the film so if there was the consent so what was in reality you were you are curious yeah <laughs> okay uh, we, we, we were separated um, already since uh, three years, no, more, five. Uh, so, yeah, she's the mother of Eugenia. And, uh, yeah, so we, I, I, for example, that is a bit fiction. It seems like uh, I think in the film, well, I don't know, it becomes so private, so I don't want to speak about that. But anyway, you have a version of a possible story. You can get some aspects, maybe, of what happened. But you have... I, I, I don't think it was very important to be extremely clear about that. Um, I thought that it's possible to imagine, also because he's mentioned another person, another woman, so it's possible to think uh, that uh, we are not, we were not together. But I don't... I, I didn't think it was very important. No? And then clearly in the film it's not that possible to argue it's not great for a list of things. Huh? <laughs> but in, in the film it was a bit more sad but in the German list it was really was done well. Yeah, it was quite people, clear there so was a general problem. So it's not to, address, to so speak so of the specific cases. It's, <laughs> one, one of main it's general. Know. And then there is the Obama dream which again is a kind of <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It's uh, yeah. Uh, if you are not satisfied in private, I will tell you everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got kind of two questions. So the first one is just a practical one. Um, how many days were you walking for, and was the camera on the whole time? Of course, not the whole time. I mean, we 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 sh we were <coughs> in the on the mountain for around three weeks, but there was a moment before we were going back forth from that flat, that house that you see at the beginning. We were that was my house, my flat, and uh, we were sleeping there. So. I don't remember how, how many nights we slept in the tent for real when sometimes we went to the kind of refuge. Uh, so, but anyway, it was around three weeks on the mountain and there were days where we were just walking uh, or preparing uh, and there were days where we shot a lot. Anyway, the camera was always there and we could always mm, take it and, and shoot. Um, yeah, that's the more or less the, um, what happened. It was, was very, very free. Then there were moments where I insisted to do something that was on my mind and clearly didn't work. 
um, and other times that uh, that everything was very spontaneous and uh, uh, and there were days good days for Sarah and good days for me and the opposite <laughs> was uh, but w we were very very in I mean in terms of uh, inspiration artistic or uh, uh, I mean to be to be inspired but. Uh, but what was very, very open to, to what happened in that, yeah. Um, and then the other question was, how does it feel kind of looking back at yourselves? Like how do you, I guess lots of people have footage of themselves, but rarely is it shown in such a kind of public way. So how do you look back at yourself then as you are now? I mean, how I come across from the film. Yeah, like, I don't know, for me, if I saw me talking like 10 years ago, I would probably, I don't know if I would recognize, you kind of see yourself in photos and you think you're the same person, but then when you see yourself talk, you kind of realize that you had different thoughts at the time. You said that you had kind of a lot going on internally, you were questioning lots of things. Yeah. Do you identify with that person now or do you kind of, do you feel like there's a big change? No, I feel, I feel the, the years... Uh went by and uh, fortunately there are changes uh, so I think uh, I see the the distance but at the same time yeah I recognize everything and I know everything what's behind everything and uh, yeah and probably uh, there are things that are always there yeah so I it's definitely the same. Uh, I'm more interested in rewatching and more interested in because I don't know. Maybe you want to say something. For him, was even more dramatic the change because he, he <laughs> from eight years old to to twenty, uh, maybe even nine to twenty is, is my age was uh, was different. No? So so I don't know. I I was interested in see it also in the terms of the evolution of our relationship but i don't know if you yeah i think it was kind I, of can i ask your question to him yeah i was going to say it's the same question for you eugenio because i guess looking back how does it feel to have you know a auditorium full of strangers watching you as an eight-year-old so um i actually recognize myself more than i thought i i, I would um but I think what really makes, I think I recognize myself through um, a lot of memories. I don't know, it's, it's kind of a weird feeling, but even just the clothes I was wearing at school that I forgot about, but like seeing them in the movie, seeing what my dad was wearing or seeing that house that we don't have anymore and everything. And then like the ident identity I had as a child, like just came back and it, I guess it is, part of me still I just yes and yeah it, it, it the movie kind of gave me actually like a, a rhythm to to I don't know to remember some features of myself so yeah but yeah I do recognize myself yeah Germany was coming. We were continuing in the bar, by the way, after the war, like, you know, 30 questions to Giovanni, that he, he, he prepared to invest the environment. But thank you so much, Eugenio. Thank you so much to Giovanni. Thank Madera. you.